Okay, so now we're going to take a look at some of the muscles of the thoracic wall. So first of all, we'll take a look at some of the muscles which attach to the thoracic cage, and then we'll look at some of the smaller muscles which lie between the ribs in the intercostal spaces. So outside the rib cage, we've got three muscles, really. We've got the serratus anterior, which you can see laterally and anteriorly here. And then at the back, we've got the serratus posterior, and we've got a superior and inferior muscle. So we'll start with the superior muscle. So as you can see here, the serratus posterior superior originates on the spinous processes of the vertebra. So it originates from, the, from C7 to T3 on the spinous processes. And it inserts on the upper borders of the um, second to fifth ribs. So if I just remove the scapula there, and just temporarily remove the serratus anterior, you can see the insertion point of this muscle on the ribs. So this muscle is innervated by the corresponding intercostal nerves. So it, is, it attaches to the second to fifth ribs, and it's innervated by the second to fifth intercostal nerves. And its function is to elevate the ribs. So you can imagine if it contracts, the angle of the muscles indicates that it's going to pull the rib cage upwards and elevate the ribs. So this assists in inspiration. So just taking a look a bit lower down at the serratus posterior inferior, and this muscle originates from the spinous processes of T11 to L2, and it's, it inserts on the, on, a, on the lower ribs, so ribs 9 to 12, and again it's innervated by corresponding intercostal nerves, so the intercostal nerves which come from T9 to T12, and its function is opposite to the superior serratus posterior. So it depresses the lower ribs and this helps in forced expiration. So coming back round to the front, um, you can see the serratus anterior muscle here on either side. And this muscle originates on the upper rib, so it originates from the first eight to nine ribs and it inserts on the medial border of the scapula, on the costal surface, medially on the scapula. So I've just isolated this muscle on the skeleton here, and you can see the medial border of the scapula here, and the costal surface of the scapula is the, scap is the anterior surface of the scapula, which lies close to the rib cage. So the serratus anterior originates on the medial side of the scapula, on its costal surface. So this muscle is innervated by the long thoracic nerve and its function is to protract and to stabilize the scapula. So it works to pull the scapula forward around the thorax and it also keeps the scapula pressed against the thorax. So now we're going to take a look at some of the muscles that lie in the intercostal spaces. So you've got three muscles, um, three layers of muscles that lie in this intercostal space. So the intercostal spaces are the spaces between the ribs. And the three muscles that you have are the external intercostal, the internal intercostal, and then you've got the innermost intercostal muscle. So that's from superficial to deep. So it's useful to know the orientation of the muscle fibers of these three layers. So the external intercostal muscle has fibers which are in oriented inferiorly and medially. So the external oblique fibers run like this, so towards the midline and inferiorly. And what's particularly interesting about this muscle is that anteriorly, where it's about to meet the sternum, it doesn't continue as muscle, but it forms this aponeurosis called the external intercostal membrane. And this aponeurosis connects it to the, to the sternum. So it's got a little sheet of aponeurosis called the external intercostal membrane. So underneath the external intercostal muscle, you've got the internal intercostal muscle. And these fibres are oriented in the opposite direction. So they're oriented in superior direction and medial direction. So they're like this. And this doesn't have the aponeurosis which connects it to the sternum.
and deep to the internal intercostal muscle. When you remove the internal intercostal muscle layer, you see the innermost intercostal muscle layer. And these fibers are oriented in the same direction as the internal intercostal muscle, so superiorly and medially. So the way to remember the orientation of these fibers is with a simple mnemonic, which is the same as the mnemonic I used in the um, abdominal, anterior abdominal wall muscles tutorial. So hands in pockets and hands on tits. So if I just draw some hands which are in pockets, pretty crappy drawing, but best I can do unfortunately. So this is uh, the forearm and this is the hand and this is the sort of angle your forearms would be if they were in your pockets. So pockets has the letter E in it so this is the direction the external intercostal muscles would be oriented. And if your hands are on your tits, so another pair of badly drawn hands, then the muscle fibres um, sorry, your forearms would be angled upwards and inwards in the same direction as the internal intercostal. So tits has the letter I in it, so the internal intercostal muscles are oriented in the supero-medial direction, the same as the angle of your forearms. So those are the three layers of intercostal muscles. And underneath the innermost intercostal muscle, you've got the endothoracic fascia, which separates the intercostal muscles from the underlying um, pleural cavity containing the lungs. So underneath the endothoracic fascia, you've got the parietal pleura, then the visceral pleura, and finally you've got the lung. So in terms of the actions of these muscles, the external intercostal muscle is important in inspiration, whereas the internal intercostal muscle is important in expiration. And the innermost intercostal acts with the internal intercostal muscle. So remember they have the fibres oriented in the same direction. So the muscle actions are similar. So they're active during expiration. And these three muscles are innervated by the associated intercostal nerves. So the intercostal nerves from T1 to T11. So I've removed the muscles from this model and I want to point out something that's quite important. So between the internal intercostal muscle and the innermost intercostal muscles, you've got a neurovascular bundle. So you've got the intercostal vein, artery and nerve, which lie in the subcostal groove underneath the rib. So if I just show you this skeleton model again, we're just going to rotate round to the back. And if I just zoom in a little bit on this um, rib cage, I can show you the subcostal groove. So at the inferior margin of the rib, you've got this little groove at this sort of level. And you've got this neurovascular bundle which runs in this, in this subcostal groove, sorry, the costal groove. So in this groove, you've got nerves, arteries, and veins. So from superior to inferior, you've got the um, vein at the top, the intercostal vein, then you've got the intercostal artery and the intercostal nerve. So the easy way to remember that is that it spells van, V-A-N, from superior to inferior, vein, artery, nerve. So just coming, returning to this model, you can see those structures here. So you've got the uh, vein, artery and nerve, but these are shown a little bit out of place as they are mostly um, covered by the rib and lie in the costal groove. But sometimes the, the lowest structure, the nerve, can be can lie out of the costal groove and be unprotected. So these, these, these neurovascular structures lie between the innermost and the internal intercostal muscle. So just to give you a quick, to give you a better idea of how um, the structures are organized from superficial to deep. I'm just going to draw a little diagram on the side. So um, the first muscle you've got is the external intercostal. Then underneath that you've got the internal intercostal. And then the next muscle down is the um, innermost intercostal. And between these two muscles you've got the the neurovascular structures. So at the top you've got the vein and then you've got the artery 
and then you've got the um, nerve and then underneath the the innermost intercostal you've got the endothoracic fascia and then just underneath this you've got the pleura so you've got the parietal pleura and then you've got the visceral pleura and then you've got the lung tissue onto that so just coming back to this model again we've got three more muscles that we need to talk about and these are quite minor muscles um, but I'll just talk about them very quickly so rotating around to the back I've, I've dissected away the um, serratus posterior and the inter and the intercostal muscles from the right hand side and you can see these 12 small muscles here and these muscles are called the levatores costarum muscles and they attach from the transverse processes onto the um, rib below so for instance the fourth thoracic vertebra attaches to the fifth rib so the transverse process of T4 attaches to the rib 5 so you've got these on either side so I've just isolated the levatoris costarum muscle on the skeleton and you can see the 12 small muscles so these muscles function to um, assist in elevation of the thoracic rib cage. So the next muscle is this muscle called the subcostales muscle and as you can see it attaches from one rib to um, the next below or the one two below. So this muscle lies on the internal surface of the ribs and the final muscle which I'm going to talk about is this one which also lies internally to the rib cage and this is called the transversus thoracus muscle. So this muscle originates inferiorly on the body of the sternum and also on the um, xiphoid process and it originates on some parts of these costal cartilages and it inserts onto the um, it inserts internally on ribs two to six so on the costal cartilages of ribs two to six and its function is to pull the ribs down so those are the muscles which make up the thoracic wall.